Okay, do your best mimic of an F1 sound. I'm not very sure how it goes. <laughs> okay. Alright, hi guys. Welcome to Coconut's second episode of our Side, Side View, View podcast. podcast. Today we have a few topics on hand. Uh, and we have a Bentley because last week we have that uh, saga of the red sati car which you got a bit uh, heated. Uh. So <laughs> got... this week we unintentionally got a Bentley in. Unintentionally. Uh, that is um, featured by um, Lettuce Otto. Uh, do check them out on the socials. Basically, this uh, Bentley right behind um, Asof and me is a W12 6 litre uh, engine uh, Bentley GT Continental. So, um, Asof, maybe you want to tell us more about this car? Okay, uh, so I mean, in uh, Singapore's context, we have the problem of high cap capacity cars getting a huge load of road tax. That is why uh, manufacturers are creating like the four liter versions, the twin turbo versions, because I mean, uh, people that like cars still like that speed, still like the adrenaline and in a way, uh, turbos do give it that and the higher the CC, obviously you will have like carbon emissions with the Euro 4, 5, 6 kicking in right now. All the car manufacturers are going into this, going into electric, going to carbon emission. So I do feel a bit sad that uh, high capacity cars like, like this is on a, what do you call it, sunset. sunset la. So this unit we have behind us is um, actually, um, the COE is going to be up soon. Uh, Road tax. If you actually renew this oh, car, oh, yeah, yeah, from yeah. what I understand, if you actually renew this car, yeah, if it's on a third year in, uh, because after a COE car is renewed, right, there's a 10% increase every year. every year, right? So I'm yeah. quite sure this car is like, if we did the, by the third year since you yeah. renew COE, the road tax is like 10 grand a year or something like that, I, right? I'm not sure, maybe we can... Uh, currently it's about 6,000 plus, I think. Maybe we can check it out, then yeah. our editors will put a number here like that. Sure, like that. yeah. <laughs> so so uh, you guys got to do your <laughs> gotta do the job. Alright, so... um. Personally wise, I am uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more of an NA guy, I'm more of a naturally aspirated guy. I love the W12 engine, um, especially if there is a bit of tweak to the exhaust uh, system. So and I that actually, will give you the sound. Yeah, the so line. a few years yeah. ago, I, 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 was, um, I was having a uh, supper at this uh, particular uh, Roti Prata area. And this uh, particular Bentley GT, uh, I'm quite sure it's a W12 engine inside. Um, he pulled up and the exhaust notes were just insane. So I'm quite sure that the exhaust music was, somewhat, the ears. Yeah, was changed and modified. And I'm not even sure if it's a straight pipe, but the sound alone is just Okay, crazy. by the way, uh, straight pipes is uh, illegal in Singapore. So yeah, yeah so we have So, so we just want to explain what's a straight pipe. So basically, um, the exhaust pipes on the, on the undercarriage is actually a kind of a zigzag motion and you have the different motions, right? And then the mufflers in between as well, right? For one, I understand. Correct. So, so in a normal muffler, there's like a lack of a better word, kind of like cotton that kind of muffles everything so that you don't get the sound pollution. And especially uh, Singaporeans, which I myself uh, am a Singaporean as well. So let's shoot ourselves a bit. Uh. Everything complain. When we drive HDB loud a bit, complain. LTA come. We go past anywhere. Complain this, complain that. So that's why. Uh, so, by the time when we finish complaining, um, I think we, we sort of deserve it that we don't, we no longer get the V12s, the V10s, and the V8s anymore around <laughs> us. Like, I assume that's, I mean, I, I, that's where we're actually headed towards. And um, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm actually kind of, I'm uh, kind of upset. Uh, I'm kind of upset, upset with this whole thing. Yeah. yeah. But also, uh, because right now, I mean, the whole world is going green. So there's an influx of uh, electrical uh, technology in, in cars and everything. Uh, so just a fun fact, how VW, all this come into play, uh, I would say, just, just give a, a quick, uh, how to say, information for you guys. Do you know how, uh, how, how the V or W comes about? Uh, not really sure. I'm not really okay. sure. Yeah. So when we talk about V6, I mean V is the shape of like that. So how it comes is that there are three pistons <laughs> on the side and that gives you the unique roaring V sounds for... I, I don't know, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know why the piston like that then got a the V sound. Same as a Boxster. 
Boxster, we are talking about parallel pistons moving like that. So it's not, uh, how to say, affected by gravity. Because if the piston is moving up and down, when it goes down, gravity just makes that one go down faster, in a sense. So with V, uh, it does give you that roaring sound and we don't have to explain uh, when it's dub W. Dub W means two Vs. Uh. So, so, because it's W, if I make a tweak to the exhaust, is it safe to say that the sound will be just thunderous and... Yes. So uh, let's give our editors another uh, job to do. So you may want to get a in clip, F, uh, we'll add a clip in, in here. In F1, before the hybrid era, yeah. uh, there's a... I mean, to me, uh, there, there was V6, there was V10 and V12. Uh, please add in the V12 clip. The Whew. Michael Schumacher era. What? Wow, what? Like, do the sound Whew. again? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. That sounds like a supercharger, yeah, but yeah, I, I think something uh, somewhere oh, do, do we need to play uh, how, how we mimic uh, F1 sound now? Okay, do your best mimic of uh, F1 sound. I'm not very sure. Okay. Uh, so, so again, uh, that's how the V came about, that's how W's came about, and yeah, I, I share the same sentiments with Sylvester that, that... So, for this is a W12, right? Um, the greener version of the Bentley GT is the V8 twin turbo engine, right? Greener, uh, uh, so I would green. So, it's a V8 twin turbo 4 liter engine uh, that... Uh, so, there's a, there's a difference, right, in the output and stuff like that. So um, generally, what's your feel towards the V8 twin turbo on your end? I mean, there's always the debate between turbo and NA, right? Uh, turbo does have its uh, perks in a sense that when the turbo kicks in, because it's forced injection, then you get the turbo. But of course, when there's good, that's bad as well. Uh, personally, I don't really like the turbo lag. So uh, whenever, I, w I would love it if like, like tuners, you know, they can get through the turbo lag to make it more drivable and stuff like that. It's not like you step, then it, then you step more, then the kick come after that. Don't feel as uh, on demand, la. Okay. on demand, la, okay. I would say. Okay. Yeah, and of course with higher CCs, with more pistons, with 12 pistons, is really just purely the more pistons you have, the more on demand, the more power you have. Also, la. I think this car is about like two, ta two tons, right? So like definitely the turbo lag is gonna be quite uh, evident. I would say, but I mean, Bentley has been one of the best car makers. So uh, driven a four liter V8 twin turbo before, if you don't uh, need to use the turbo, it actually is a very, very smooth drive. La. But again, uh, the petrol, even if you not a heavy footer or what, it, it kills you, la, especially in, uh, Singapore's exorbitant petrol prices. I just came back from KL. Three dollar thirty cent ringgit. Eight three dollar. Three dollar thirty ringgit. Three point three ringgit. Three point three ringgit. Okay. The ninety seven. Okay. In Singapore, it's just how much is it now? I think it's three, three plus. The, yeah. So it's like three point three like times. Okay. Eh. okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's good that uh right now. The government is uh, moving towards a greener future. So, I mean, we everyone can see uh, the in infrastructure of the electrical scene that they're building, reduction of the road tax. Although I have one complaint, even the Model 3's road tax now is still very high. La. So Even so, for the standard range, yeah, right? From yeah, what I know. Yeah. So, I, I feel like, you know... Um, okay, we, if, we, we, if we any... need some time. We'll need some time to, 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 to evolve. We'll need some time for the market to catch up, I would say, uh, uh, because uh, the infrastructure has to be in place first, mm. I think. So if the infrastructure is in place, then I think uh, this is where we, we, the demand meets the supply. And uh, I think that's where we will intersect and, and, and that's when we, we have a, we have an equilibrium. So you think that, uh, you think that our, our government is actually uh, putting in the effort to really, really oh, develop absolutely, the... absolutely. If you actually look around, uh, these days, right, um, there are actually more and more uh, charging points. There are more service providers coming up. So I think, I think, I really think that uh, we 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 are we are we are, ex we are actually expediting our infrastructure development a lot for EVs. 
and I, I think it's a, it's a fast step forward. So, uh, um, the I would say that very slowly, uh, the V12s, the V10s, uh, sad to say, uh, are going to be eroded over time. Uh, the existence will be erased uh, over time. And um, EVs are just uh, the new thing, the new, the, the new kids on the block. So that's where you, you, you have to compare, you see. So I think, I think the most popular EV to date is still a Tesla in Singapore. To yes. date, right? Yeah. Yes. So for some reason, we like to follow the trend of uh, US, la, in yeah. a sense. La. Yeah. So if you actually, so I, I would say you have to balance out the brands in, the, in terms of the brands wise. Or what, what do you think of the Tesla? What do you think of or the different electric cars that we put out? Like Polestar, the Porsche as the Taycan, uh, the yeah. Volvo as the Polestar. Uh, uh, and the BYDs are coming out. And, and then you have the BMW iX mm. and stuff like that, right? So 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 what, what do you think of like the different brands and, and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, right now, right now it's not only like a new car. I would, a Tesla is not a new car maker, la, but uh, they... It's no longer electric companies doing it. We do have the EQs from the Mercedes uh, as well. So like the general car manufacturers that have been around are all creating their own version of EV. Controversial uh, topic. Uh, if any government officials are looking at this or uh, watching this, uh, I want to revisit the point of... Uh, actually really building the electrical infrastructure. Yes, I do agree that charging stations are, are built. Our infrastructure is uh, going at a nice pace. But it is still down to the buying power. And I feel, that's why I say it's a controversial topic, that if our government really wants us to go green, what actually can be the reason of the road tax still being so high? Because let's say now I'm, I'm driving a standard Model 3, not a performance, not on anything. I just want to get from point A to point B. And, and uh, like I said, not about how fast a Tesla is. By the way, it's very fast. But uh, me buying a Tesla Model 3 to get me from point A, I will be put off by, I'm trying to be green. I want to save the environment. It is, to me, like, it's okay if you don't give me a, rebate, which government does give uh, rebates from the CVS and stuff like that. I'm not asking for the rebate, but why is my road tax more expensive than even uh, E200? I think I think how they have measured EV's uh, road tax currently is Half power. the kilowatt, the kilowatt, yeah. the, which is the, the electrical power of the car, right? Mm. So I think because there's no engine capacity for the EV, so it's, it's really a, a totally new metric for authorities to catch up with to measure how much tax um, these vehicles should be paid. That being said, do you think that the authorities are actually catching up fast enough? Because like you said, the infrastructure, all this is building rapidly. So I don't know, I don't know how all this uh, tax system works, but how fast is it actually to really create a new, uh, how to say, system f to, to give a better price or more affordability for people that actually want to go green and it's nothing to do with the performance. I think it takes time. I think I think it takes I think it takes some time. Um because they have been calculating uh road tax per se in this particular manner. So if you want to change it, there's a whole process that they have to go through in terms of uh, law making and stuff like that. So and then you know there's a lot of complications in between and, and and of course, ultimately, is this economically viable as a tax, right? So, I mean, at the end of the day, the government still has to tax you in some form, mm. right? So, uh, you, 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 even if you go to any other countries, right, there's still some form of tax in every car, whether it's a Tesla, whether it's a Bentley and stuff like that. So, I think, I think it's important to, to understand that um, tax, this is just taxation by other means. And I think it's also something that is essential in the whole ecosystem. Okay, and uh, don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying like, uh, reward me for driving an electrical car, but I still don't see why going green, we in a way uh, get a penalty for it because it's just more expensive than a normal day-to-day uh, -day car, especially when I want to go green. That, that is my point as to, I feel that in this aspect, uh, 
we are actually not given that uh, opportunity to reduce our cost to really, really want to go green, which is uh, in line with, with how they are rapidly building the infrastructure and like how like Blue SG is uh, getting more and more, how, how they are making it convenient for us to get point A to point B without actually owning a car with get go and stuff like that. Lah. So okay. uh, we are, not okay. say I would need an answer, but it's my own so personal this is something that we, problem. We, this is something that we we have to we we have to wait a wait. I I would say we have to wait at least a few more years before this concern is addressed uh, properly. Which we may not even get an answer by then. Another controversial thing on the same topic is that do you think that the increase of road tax uh, is uh due to the opportunity cost that is lost that the government don't get the tax and GST from pumping petrol. Because you get EV, you don't pump petrol. Then if you get EV, your charging is significantly cheaper than petrol. And that tax uh, from the electricity is much lesser compared to if you pump petrol. I think, the I, think, I, I think this theory makes sense. It, to me, it makes sense. And like what we say, because um, this is just taxation by other means. And you, you have your roads, you have your infrastructure that is paid for by the government, right? So you there's some somehow somewhere the cost has to be allocated somewhere right so i think uh what you have brought up is a is a fair opinion it's a fair mm. opinion right but okay to, to be honest to me the main thing about an ev is definitely the speed and the instant talk <laughs> okay a bit the so now because of the controversial topics right now i'd be worried so uh Tapping on, on uh, a bit of your law background, right? I like that say in the census of Singapore, where I get into trouble. Like, hey, government, what are you doing? I feel like not very sincerely. You want us to drive EV, then you tax us so much. I think, I think you cannot openly critique the law mm. or you cannot openly critique a, a court judgment. But that's okay. The, yeah, my you, you opinions can give, you are okay. something. You can give something that's fairly opinionated. Yeah, okay, it's, okay. it's better not to give something that is... Very, very biased. So, so in a way, yeah. in a way, what is okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. okay. It's okay. okay. Yeah, okay. you're not okay. slamming anyone per se. Okay, you okay, know, okay. Just expressing some fair opinion, I would say. Yeah, yeah I, I really think so, uh, And and this has actually been bugging me, uh, for quite some time because, uh, we we work closely even before uh Tesla came in, so we do have quite a lot of uh PIs that that I personally have transacted. So in terms of the road tax and anything, I, I sound like a broken machine, a bit naggy. La, but ah, I can't get over why we are trying to be green and yet, you know, to a certain extent, kind of penalized for it. But okay. <coughs> Maybe they're paying for the speed. <coughs> Maybe <laughs> they're paying for the speed at the instant top. That <coughs> being said, for the speed, uh, we're talking about W12, how you like this... Uh, kind of cars that are on a, on a not say downward trend, but uh, yeah, like I mentioned, because of the Euro 5, Euro 6, all this kind of things, carbon emissions, people going green. I think- It's a matter of time. It's la. a matter of time uh, we get the, the, the big engines are gone. Mm. Uh, especially nowadays uh, with the EVs coming in, I think the, the main question to understand, right, is uh, <clears throat> do you realize how fast an EV can be specifically a Tesla. Specifically a Tesla. Yes. I I don't think I don't think besides besides Tesla owners, I don't think anyone can really fully comprehend how insanely fast a Tesla is. If, if we want, if you really want to see uh comparisons, right? There are actually a lot of YouTube videos in the states, whereby I mean fastest drag race car. Uh, we always talk about the Godzilla. How how potentially fast they can tune it, thousand, thousand over horsepower, and it's undisputed like the fastest track car with the chassis and everything. Uh, have you seen a fully reduced model S? Not even like now the the oh, ludicrous more uh, okay, not I'm not talking about that, just a normal model S, right? The GTR uh, fully tuned uh, like that, uh, the model S like that. Instantly, then yeah. So so yeah. That's the comparison on how. Um, so that's that's because that's because the that's because the electric cars has an instant torque, as compared to the traditional petrol engine, 
where you need some form of RPM to kick in, right? For what I understand. Yeah, and inertia. Yeah, so you need the inertia and the RPM to kick mm. in, right? So that's where the that's where the, the, the start off is uh, different, right? So of course, uh, I'm quite sure at high speeds, the petrol engine uh, car, also depending on the car, yeah. will most likely catch up with the Tesla in yeah. some ways, in some ways, right? But if you're talking about a drag race uh, in a certain distance, the torque, la, the torque is just I'm crazy. Not sure, I'm not sure if anyone can comprehend how insanely fast the Tesla actually can, is. So right now, right, we yeah. need to give our editors another job. Okay. We're going to pluck out some YouTube video. Uh, GTR versus Model S. Those kind of or like... Model 3 or whatever uh, it eight is. Eight years ago, the older ones. Uh, and, and that was eight years ago technology. <laughs> now with, with uh, the newer battle. technology, with Elon Musk constantly uh, r and and everything, Tesla has become way more reliable. Uh... It came to our shores gladly. Uh, I'm happy that we, we Singaporeans can can kind of see these cars whereby just maybe shortly a year or a year ago, you see one Tesla on the road. It's like, whoa, whoa. It's so unique. So so it's a it's a good scene. It's a good scene. That being said, uh, yeah, I think that kind of sums up uh, what we feel. But I get a sense of inkling uh, that so you like Electric or you like petrol? Okay, so I, I I don't have I don't have a specific preference. I think I think as a as a as a as a car enthusiast or someone that's very passionate about cars, I think I think you you don't really pick a side a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So you you actually love cars as they are. Mm -hmm. So you you don't uh, for me is I'm I'm fairly balanced on both ends to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm fairly balanced also. I appreciate the Tesla in terms of. The talk. So you only appreciate the Tesla at the pickup lah. Well, then no, also, also of course, of course, the of course the, the car is easy to drive, right? The, yeah. the regenerative braking and stuff like that. So it's it caters to lazy drivers like me, where I I, I really don't like to move my feet a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and then again, I love the petrol cars as well. I mean, so now you are driving looking, a McLaren or Ferrari, it's it's, it's gonna be crazy. So now you're taking a dig at my. Manual car la. No, I'm not thinking of dick. You I'm don't not, want to move I, In fact, <laughs> I also love manual cars. In fact, I, I love don't manual cars. want to move legs, but like manual cars. Yeah, so I've, I've, driven, I've driven a lot of manual cars as well. Personally, own manual cars. I, I, manual cars are just different. Just built different. And, and I, think, I think as a car enthusiast or a true car enthusiast, I think you, there should not be any judge, uh, uh, prejudice. I think there should not be any uh, prejudgment on anybody's end. I think you should accept and love the cars as they are, wow. as it is. Deep. I think. Wow. Deep. How I are think. humans? Yeah. Humans, you, you should so, so accept. I, 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 think, I think really that's, I think that's the base level. I think nowadays we, we look a lot at the brands. I think we look a lot at the brands. We look at the, the whether it's a JDM, whether it's a Conti. Uh, I'm not really into all that. I think as a, if you are a true uh, car enthusiast, if you are someone that's truly passionate about cars, I think it does not matter if it's a JDM or you, you see the good sides of our yes. or aspects. Yes. Like also, there's pros it and doesn't cons matter if it's a JDM, Conti or EV. I think if you are really truly somewhat special about cars, these are all something that are equally as beloved in our eyes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that's, 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 why, that's what I really that's what I really think. Like, that's good for me. La. No, I'm not sure about other people. Yeah, I'm not sure about it, but this is really what I think. All right, yeah. all right. Okay, and now uh that we have talked about uh, you know, petrol. Uh, hybrid, EV. Hey, we didn't talk about hybrid. Okay, like that one, uh, we leave I think for the hybrid episode is about the, three. The yeah. hybrid is about the same. It's just a mixture. It's, it's just a mixture. It's a combination of the petrol and the electric engine. So the so the electric is one end of the spectrum. Petrol is the other end of the spectrum. Hybrid is just in the middle. It's just nice. Just yeah. nice. Uh. I will say that it's, it's a bit just nice in a way. You get a bit of, you get a bit of talk. Maybe, maybe current infrastructure. I, I do agree that hybrid is uh, best of both worlds in a sense that you, you kind of get the initial uh, instantaneous top power, then you don't have to charge it because it still runs on petrol and the battery is run by the engine. Eh, no, no, no. The battery is run by the battery. Yeah, and, uh, and it's burned by the petrol. Lah. Hey, we had a hybrid supercar in the morning today, the McLaren Artura V6 hybrid powertrain just right here uh, in the day. Uh, we were detailing the car, so uh, I thought when we took some videos previously, uh, please show please show the audience as well. Uh, to me, it's an insane car. 
Also, I wanted to say that this Artura, if I'm not wrong, is the second unit in Singapore. The first unit has been registered. Um, if I'm not wrong, it's uh, the, 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 the authorized agent, uh, the, the local dealer is actually uh, uh, using it as a, as a test drive car for, for the McLaren owners. Uh, I've seen it on the track and stuff like that, uh, in, the rec in the recent McLaren trips and stuff like that. So uh, if anyone's looking for Artura, I think uh, you can consider this unit. I'm not it's, selling it. I'm not selling it for sure. You can but you can consider in, it. You can plug in as well, or okay. it's purely. Uh, if I'm not wrong, you can plug it in. If I'm not wrong, you can plug it in. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a hybrid V6 powertrain. Uh, this 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 unit is orange color. So I think I think it looks absolutely. Crazy. Yeah, it's the McLarens are just crazy cars. So I mean, no, oh, there's a there's a Maserati at the, yeah. the other end of the. Oh, we can hear that. Yeah. So the uh, LP, yeah. yeah. So that one, how many? Distance. So that's a V8 lah. Oh, that's, that's a V8. Sure, V8 la. You can eat like no, that. The Maserati Gran is a V8 lah. It's quite okay, sure. Okay, okay. Next, uh, the yeah. next week, right? We play ah. Uh, we ref the engine sound, right? Then you guess what? I think like that's the, quite tough. It, I think that's quite V8. tough. V8. I think V12. Actually, over time as we listen, right? Then you actually get a feel. Hey, actually, I think this is what. This is what. I think over time it takes years and years of listening and driving these cars before you actually but understand there, the sound. There is a very distinct sound of a uh, Rex. Do you agree or not? Uh, WRX. Yeah. Absolutely. That, the that, boxer engine yeah, is yeah, just yeah, the that sound one, that... For some reason... If uh, you do not <laughs> understand that sound, I I would say as a fellow enthusiast, I would be very disappointed. Uh, disappointed. <laughs> okay, but then, I, I mean, personally, I also can't tell uh, much. Maybe can kind of guess whether it's a V or not. But then the, wow, the Rex sound... I'm not saying it's a it's a fantastic sound or what, but it does have that uh distinct note lah. But uh, that's a bit sidetracked already. Right. So now on the second segment, um, the segment this segment is about up badging. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with this term, but basically up badging there's uh two definitions. One definition is that uh the car owner has pasted a badge that is, that does not belong to the model of the car. Firstly, and secondly, if uh the, the other definition of up badging is that the car exterior is uh, aesthetically modified to look like an upgraded model mm. of the same car. So uh, these are the two definitions of up badging. Uh, what do you think about it? What do I think about it? I mean, <clears throat> uh, this segment is called uh, caught or uncaught for. So basically now we are discussing whether up badging is caught or uncaught for. I think, okay, I, I think before we, we, we head to the segment of caught or uncaught for, uh, uh, let's listen to your opinion. On if you are, if you are, what, what do you think of up badging and if you are for it or not? Okay, yeah. personally, when uh, I was young, I drove a 1.4 Skiroko. Then so I, you were a YP? La. I was a, Hey, you you want to so anger were, all so, the so you were why <coughs> so so now our stigma is rock equals YP. No, I'm I'm just saying why. Then maybe uh, later no. you once this video is out right, then you walk out. Then you need to be careful a bit. Okay. Like if you see a rock right, you should like walk further away from the rock because your face. I, then I have my reservations towards the Volkswagen you know, Silver. Like, uh, Sylvester's face, then rock equals YP. Then you anger a lot of people. I have my okay, anyway. Anyway. Uh, whether I, I was a YP or not, uh, we leave this topic to another day. But I was young. So if you're talking about up badging, I would say I was guilty of that as well. Uh, I put her... So you pasted an R badge on your Sirocco? Yeah, but, but I didn't really uh, think much in a sense that I just like how the R logo look. Hey, I'm reconsidering our, our, I'm reconsidering our friendship. Our partnership. I have serious <laughs> considerations about our friendship now. So I went to get the I, 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 something even worse. Uh. We, we are young. Uh. He didn't really have much money to, to buy uh, the full body kit and stuff like that. So the worst thing that I did, right? I only could afford the <laughs> Run bumper. So you change the only the front bumper. Sirocco to 
a R, a circle half R, R, a circle, half R. Okay. Because R, you have the side oh, skirts as that's, that's well. That's fine, la. that's fine. No, no, no. I, I think it's not fine. Now, uh, at hindsight, it's not fine because even the side skirts is not. And then like, you know, if I, I like the look of the R front bumper, no need to put the R so logo. So the la. car looks a bit <laughs> la, if they, in that in that assets. Uh, then later, you see, la, later they need to add the to the half Thing you, do. you see, la? you give them more job to do. Okay, but anyway, uh, yeah, as I was saying, um, I was guilty of it. Uh, if now you, you ask me, it's not say I have any strong prejudice or a strong judgment on whether we should uh, up batch or not, but I, I find uh, on a lighter note, the, the funny one that I like to see uh, personally, right, is, is that up batch release, what's his uh, handle? So basically, oh, so, so, uh, there's, this, there's this Instagram handle guy. Uh, he, basically what he does is, he uh, users also submit, uh, make submissions to him via Instagram. And then what he does is, so uh, you can actually search the car plate number of a car on the LTA, on the One Motoring website. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually verify if the car is like the actual model, yeah. based on and the car plate. you also can see whether they paid their road tax. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so basically, it's, it's an open to public kind of thing. So basically, right, uh, this, this, there's this, there's this Instagram handle. Uh, what I think it's called a uh, fake, fake car scam master or something or something like that. Okay, so, so basically, again, we will put the, the, the yeah, yeah, the Instagram yeah, handle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, please show them the Instagram handle. So basically, this, uh, this guy or this this user, what he does is he he searches the the car on the one motoring website, and then he pastes down and then he he makes uh he 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 puts in funny captions Like for mm -hmm. example, if you're not an M six. Uh, for example, if you are driving a BMW 640 and then you put a uh, M6 badge on, then he captions will be YAM6. Why a M6? So YAM6. Nice, nice YAM6, sir. Because you want up badge, now you get a YAM treatment. Nice YAM6, sir. <laughs> okay. So I would say, I would say uh, for me, I would say that up badging itself, I, 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 I'm, I'm, not, I'm not for it, firstly. Okay, so I, I tell you why. For example, if I'm driving a Volkswagen Sirocco, right? 1.4. And let's say if I were to place an R badge, I think uh, inadvertently it attracts more attention as well. Then I think inadvertently it attracts more like-minded people mm. to aggressively mm. drive behind me. Because of the R or badge. aggressively try to show me to a race. And I think I think I, I think I think you get more of this. I'm I'm quite sure. I'm quite sure because there's there's so many cars that 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 I've driven based on experience and I can tell you that people really, I, I'm not sure what's wrong with them, but there are some car drivers that actually get the kick out of showing uh, a better car, a better car yeah. uh, to a, a small little race or a bit of a, a, a bit of a, a, a speed trial, we call it, which, speed is, trial. which is illegal, which yeah, is yeah, illegal, yeah. right? So um, I, 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 I feel that it's okay to change your body kit. I feel that it's okay to, to 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 change your car to look like it's the upgraded the upgraded variant of the car. For example, the Sirocco is 1.4, you change it to an R body kit, but do not paste R patch. I think that's fine because it's an aesthetical thing that you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. But I think the moment you paste the patch down, I think I think uh I feel psychologically you are trying to cover up for some form of insecurity. I think. I think So to, okay. today you are Sylvester the psychologist. So I I obviously I've also up uh, up batched my cars in the past. Then just now you cover like that. So then you now so, you tell me you earn self up batch. So I was also a C na la to be honest, right? One double standard. So I have uh, up batched my E two hundred to uh I've added the AMG batch to my E two hundred. So I have to say that I am very guilty of it. Okay, but the E two hundred still there. I have to admit that no no no, no I really just to put the AMG. Yeah, there. so I just put the AMG. So. I will admit that I have done those things before and I will never do those things again. Okay, I think not so bad because uh, you you remove the E200. Ma. But like for me, uh, I put an R. La, so the, okay, la, so I, you put an R, then there's a 1.4 TSI batch on steel. La. If I'm not wrong, remove. Okay, then that's fine. Then that's fine. So so basically, basically it's a, it's a, it's a complete up batch in a certain way, which you, I think, like I said, you will attract a lot of attention. And, uh, and, and truth be told, truth be told, I, I usually advise our customers. I actually successfully convinced one customer to debatch the AMG 
and the CLA45S batch because I cannot say it's a he or she or not because the batch that was on the car was a CLA180. The, the, the car is a CLA180. But the customer has pasted and did a full conversion to a CLA45S and pasted the batch even. But the date giveaway was the rims because the rims and the offsets were, to me as an enthusiast, it was obvious to me. <laughs> So it was, that was a dead giveaway to me. So I, I, uh, the customer came in, you know, uh, did some deep cleaning and detailing and stuff like that. Then in the midst of it, I saw the batch. I saw the arm batch. And then I took it upon myself to convince the customer during the debatch, the collection to debatch. And I successfully got the customer to debatch the car completely. So your point was out of a uh, tender loving care that you don't want them to get unwanted uh, road, road, how to call it? Road, road chills. Road chills, uh, dangerous driving. All yeah, this I feel that if someone sees that you are AMG batch or 45S, I feel that you get more, you get more aggressive driving drivers towards you or, or, or racers want to be, right? To, to poke you. I think, I, I think that's just, that's just my, that's just my opinion. Mm. And I, I, I personally have experienced some of these things before as well. So I feel like, you know, it's like, like, uh, it's a bit unwanted and um, you want to drive at a very peaceful so and the smoothest if, way possible. So what if uh, it is really the higher performance model like a 45S, B, A or so CLA? So once again, we also have the other end of the spectrum. We have a customer that actually drives a CLA 45S AMG, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. And there was some Do we minor, need a... there was some minor, minor things that have been done to the car, right? Do we need and, a special mention to our uh, beloved uh, uh, customer? We don't have to, but I think everyone knows that. Uh, and then we debatched the car. We convinced the customer to debatch the car completely. So basically, behind the CLA is just a complete clean boot. There's no batch at all. There's no AMG batch. There's no cycle and carriage batch. There's no CLA 180 or not. Okay. That's that's so that's debatching is the middle spectrum. Then there's the the other end of the spectrum is what down badging. Down badging. Yeah. So I think, so a hey, shout out to the down batch good boys. So <laughs> down batch good boys means what? So basically, right, they actually drive an M6, but they change their batch to a 640i. Yeah. So, so, they, so to you, this is the real handsome so one. So when I go, yeah. So when I, when I, when I, when I use my 1.4 Sirocco and try to chill this 640i, then it's actually a real M6. Then that's when it's a good night for me. Good night, yeah. as in yes. That good, would be a good night, night as in for me. Like you. What? How? How does good? What's good night? Okay, so so basically, uh, in, uh, in earlier days, so called, right? The, the 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 term good night in terms of a street racing kind of style, right? Is that you 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 smoke that the particular person, and then uh because you smoke the person, so you you put you're putting the person you're putting the baby to the court. Uh -huh. So uh, because you smoke the person, so oh, uh -huh. put the baby to the court. So it's a good night for the baby. So it's just a good night. So we because so we keep saying good night. Uh -huh. So after you smoke, so we say good night. So in so when I say when you know when you meet a car that has down batch, and it's an actual real M6 for example or real M5, it's a good night. It's a good night. Okay, it's a good okay. night. Okay. Yeah. Uh, quite yeah. catchy. Yeah. So uh, do we have to name this uh, video good night? We hashtag. No, so, good night. So uh, what we want to listen to is uh, tell us your good night stories downstairs. It downstairs, be, uh, uh, in the comment section. The Let comments. us know. You know, or just you know, just send it us, send it to us on our socials. We want to know a good night story that you have experienced before, or that you have put someone to sleep before. Yeah, share with us. Tell us a story. Do on the comments. Send us videos. And we and want to feature. Like we want to feature these stories definitely. Can we? Want, we? Uh, we can uh, feature we, these stories. We, we, we see lah. We yeah, see we, we, yeah. we, we want to read the stories and feature the stories out. So you let us know what you are driving and then, you know, you met who and then uh, whether you were the one that was put to sleep or whether you put oh, you the put baby, to, baby sleep. to sleep. Yeah, so, and then we, you know, we want to know your good night story. So let us know your good night stories in the comment section and below. And that sums up this call or uncalled for. All right, so talking about... Uh, up badging, down badging. Uh, we do have uh, the last spectrum, uh, whereby people do change their body kits, and um, I I feel I feel that changing body kit is something that's just aesthetic la. So so thinking about the past, right? That yeah, ma, I will not do that uh, ever again. 
uh, because like people actually do see, uh, they see the R, then they see the body kit. Then they try to look into your car and find a blue needle because like for Skirokos, the R one is a blue needle. Uh. Obviously, mine is not a blue needle uh, because like I mentioned, young. So we, I bitch. cannot change the whole speedometer as well. Uh, that will cost quite a bit. Uh, so to me, uh, body kits is something that is aesthetic and like, like I do feel happy when my car has a nice body kit. Yeah, but of course we don't put the now lah. We don't put the badge. So I, the... I am also the same. I'm all for changing body kits. I think the change of body kit is just something that we all want a car that is aesthetically pleasing. And also some of us want a certain look, like we want it to be more aggressive. We want it to look a bit more bulky. We want it to look a bit more white. This way your white body kits come in. And I think we, a lot of people don't understand that actually body kits itself is actually a very specific niche uh, craftsmanship. Is it? Yeah, so you, yeah, you have people actually doing custom white body, right? And you actually take six months to do that. Yeah. So I've seen uh, GTR at uh, one of our uh, spray painting vendors. It's a white body GTR. Uh, the fiberglass has been molded, handcrafted bit by bit. And I, if I'm not wrong, the car was there for more than six months. So they do the threading yes. from scratch. Yeah, so the basically the uncle that I know, right? Basically, he, he, he works on the car when there's time because the white body takes so much time to mold and you have to set it down properly and then you have to make sure the shape is proper and stuff like that. So that car was really just insane. I think he, uh, after he built the white body kit on the GDR, I think the spray paint itself took another two months. Yeah, so I think it was really a masterpiece. 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 I'm not sure how much it costs. I'm not sure how much it costs. The price should also be a masterpiece. I think the price is definitely <laughs> a masterpiece. But I mean, the depreciation is so high. The fact that the owner can put it six months for a project. Yeah, we call that enthusiast. Really I'm, I'm, enthusiast I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the GTR is not his daily. I'm pretty sure the GTR is not his daily. So that was when uh, I realized that um, these are the things that uh, uh, what, we, we, what, we are, what we are striving to do. Actually, well, we're actually striving to move towards that direction here All at right. Coconut. Yeah. So uh, I think that's... So that kind of sums up. Uh, in conclusion is uh, up vegging, no. No. Down vegging, handsome. Okay. Yes. Handsome, swai. Yes. Swai. Then, I mean, body kits are... It's kind of a neutral thing. I think body kits are fine. Like I think, I think, I think we, we, we shouldn't be too judgmental about this. I think body kits are just a way people want to express how their car looks. I think that's yeah, totally yeah. fine. Yeah. Perfectly agree. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, that's all right. about it. So, uh, thanks for joining us on our second episode of our Sideview podcast. And uh, we will be moving on uh, on a monthly, is it a monthly basis? Yes. Mon and we are, monthly yeah. basis. And um, moving forward, please let us know in the comment section below what kind of topics you want us to talk about, what kind of uh, incidents, what kind of videos you want us to critique uh, let us know in the comment section. We will definitely prepare this for the next uh, podcast. And we uh, want to see the, I mean, I want to see the good night videos. Lah. Okay. Now that I know this term uh, yep. for the first time that, you know, wow, good night. So quite just cool. remember this term, good night. I'm, I'm quite sure it's coming out uh, more often in the next few <laughs> podcast episodes. Yeah. All right. And that's about it. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. <laughs>